I have a beautiful Winter Village card project to share with you today, and I hope you love it as much as I do. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. I have a die set that I created that is all about creating a little winter village. And so today's card, while there are many steps and maybe it's a little fussy, it turned out pretty cute and I love the sky. I love the village. So to see that card project stick around, it's coming up next. So here's a look at the products I'll be using today. And this is my new Winter Village die set. It is a small die set. I wanted to have a little tiny village with uh, three houses. This could be a church, or if you didn't want it to be a church, you could just snip off the top of the cross on top of the building. And it is very petite and little, but it actually die cuts beautifully. Now I'm gonna show you this right here, one of my little pieces that I have cut out. And one of the things that's really helpful for something like this is, I decided to cut in it ahead of time, is if you have some sort of foam pad. Now this is an old push pad from Scrapworks, which was an old scrapbooking company that I loved in, well, I guess you'd say the early 2000s, but I love using something like this. Any piece of foam will do, but it just makes popping out these little tiny pieces so much easier when you can just push through and they pop out. And actually, these are pretty clean cuts. This is Nina Solar White, or Nina Classic Crest in Solar White, the 110 pounds, so they're very sturdy. And I wanted to have two so I could have a little dimension. But the cuts are great and I just wanted to show you how I did all that before we get into making our winter village. Now, I'm going to use an old die set. This is one of my oldest die sets, the Stitched Hillside Borders. Bought this back in 2017 to make some sort of hill look. And I am going to do a winter sky blend for my background and some snow as well with this trio of inks from Simon. The other idea I had, I have a scrap here of some gold cardstock and I am going to back all of my windows and doors in metallic gold. I think that will create a warm glow. I might be using Happy Christmas as a greeting, but I'll decide that as we get a little bit further into it. All right. Let's begin the actual card production. I've got my waffle flower grip mat to hold my cardstock in place, and I'm gonna probably do two thirds of a blend, and I'm gonna start down here with a purple. So I've got this nice, let's see here, I've got this nice little orchid. I'm not sure how dark that is. Oh no, that's gonna be beautiful. So I'm gonna start down here and just blend on some color for my sky. And of course, this does not have to be perfect because it will smooth out nicely. It is just going to be my background, my night sky. I love doing purpley skies because I just think they're so pretty. Purples and blues and then darkening it up. And even with a few little swirls and swoops, it's going to look great. All right, that's orchid. Let's bring in violet. So we're going to move more into a blue. Again, just tap a little off so it doesn't come in too hot. We'll overlap here. And then blend it down into the orchid. And you know what? I actually think I need a darker blue than Cadet. So I'm going to grab, well, maybe not. We'll see. I have the mid blue, which is the cadet. The Simon Positively Saturated inks come in trios, and it's kind of cool to have that sort of lighter tone, the darker tone, and of course, the mid tones. All right, let me grab this and see. And again, don't worry about any extra swirls that look a little, you know, it's going to look really nice that way. I want to see what this color looks like. This might be great. This might be what I wanted. And that is pretty, but I don't think it's dark enough. So let me, I'll use it, but let me grab the royal blue. I'm actually going to use this blue anyway because it's pretty <laughs> and I hate to waste that ink. So we'll put that up top, right? And you can kind of see how 
I needed it to be darker at the top, but I think this will actually create kind of a cool, kind of a cool look because I'm going to crop this panel for sure. It's not going to end up being quite this big. So let's take a little of the Royal and darken that up top. Here we go. That just has more of a deep sort of a night sky look. Kind of coming down here like that. Just blend it out. Easy, peasy, breezy. All right. I like that because it's just got texture. So that is a panel. I think this looks beautiful. Let me clean this up because it's time to add a little snow. Actually, I just wanted to show you, I just spritz a little water onto my grip mat, which actually really keeps it nice and sticky. This stain is just from using past colors that were reds and uh, hot red tends to stain. And so it's clean, but it doesn't look clean. All right, moving on. All right, got my towel back there so I don't go crazy and get my snow everywhere. I'm going to be using the Amsterdam Acrylic Fluid Ink and I'm gonna put it, oops, sorry about that. I'm gonna put it on here and then we're just gonna let that sit and do its thing, all right? We're gonna shake it up really well and I've got my, what is this, my number four fan brush, very affordable little brush. I like to get it wet before I do this. All right, and then we're just gonna squeeze a little bit here onto the block. It gets a little messy, but I tell you, these do last. This has lasted me for quite a while. And we're gonna pick up the snow. Always start with a little practice because some of those blobbies are gonna come out pretty hot and heavy. And then you can just start tapping on snow. You can use this method where you just lightly tap on your finger. You can, you can tap off your block. At first the blobbies are big and then they're small. And that's what I like about the brush method is that it really does come across as far more random and see how much smaller they get the longer you go. Winter snow, love it so much. Yeah, that's filling in beautifully. All right, we're just gonna let our winter sky rest and we're gonna move on to filling in the gold behind all of our houses. So I'm going to be cutting a bunch of little pieces and gluing them behind. And I actually think I'll glue behind one and then stack that one on top so it has, well, no, I think I'm gonna glue two together and then fill in the windows. There's only three houses, so let me speed this up and show you how it's gonna come together. All right, let's go. one house that has shiny gold. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that for the others. Next, I need to cut a hill and I pulled some of the 80 pound Nina Classic Crest because I thought I don't want my panel to get so thick that I can't cut through it. But I also am not 100% sure how my snow hill is going to look. So I think I'm gonna start I'm going to start like, well, shoot, I don't know what my green is going to be yet. And I think I'm going to end up going with something a little more minimal. So I am going to first cut this panel to get some stitching on hill number one. So let me run that through the die cut machine. 
All right, that is hill one. Now, if I want another hill, which I might, I'm gonna set that right here so you can see how pretty that's gonna be on the, the thing with the deal. But I could also add one more hill behind, right? Let's see here, yeah. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I want it to go, oh, I gotta watch where these go though. Maybe I would want it to be, well, let's see. Just put it side by side here and that could be going off in the distance. Now I may need more trees. I actually may need more trees and I may not end up using, you know, I might change my mind, but let's see how this looks. All right, so now I have my different layers. Let's see, these are so hard. There we go, bend it, Kathy, bend it. All right, I don't know, but I'll, I'll let you see. Let's take a look because I'm trying not to do any extra popping up. What I thought would be fun, right, is to have, this might need to come down just a little bit. I'm trying to figure out that placement because I just really want to have one hill for my town. I don't really want it to be much higher up. So I want to see here, but then I want to cut this panel. So let's bring this down. And let's bring this, now I do want it to be up. Okay, we're going up just a little bit and I'm gonna cut just a little, I think that will work. Cause I wanna seal these together. So let's try gluing, all right? I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna use a little tape runner. And I could probably cut this with a paper trimmer. Um, I, I kind of wanna do it with a die but we're gonna have to see, we're gonna have to see. Cause I wanted them to all be the same size at the same time. You know, sometimes, you know, you don't wanna, you don't wanna muck around with measuring. And if I do it like this, as long as I get my dies in there with enough pressure, I think this is gonna work. So let's press that down. Now you can see I have a little bit of a hill. However, I don't want to cut it too small because this little friend, right? We're going to we're going to have our snow town here here and here. So there is snow behind. They're going to pop up a little bit and then I'm going to have maybe a tree up here. Maybe a tree down here or, or yeah, I kind of like, I kind of like that idea of having the trees like that. So these are going to pop up just a little bit. So they kind of go into the sky and we'll figure out the trees. So I think I only need to take a little bit off the edges and you know what? I'm going to do that with a paper trimmer. Let me grab my paper trimmer. So I think I'm just going to make this four by five and a quarter and then that can go on my note card I like that sweep of the hill so we'll just come over here line it up and oh that cut great yep yep and I'm gonna take the quarter off the bottom to preserve the sky yep all right that is good I'm glad I didn't do a die I think that looks really nice okay Moving on. I am going to add some foam tape because we're gonna pop this up onto a white note card. And also this will help to flatten. I had so much ink on there, I feel like it kind of curved my paper a little bit. Or it could have been when I took it off the grip mat. Sometimes that happens. Pop that down and come in here and snip. All right, so we have that. Oh, we are just at the edge. Good, that's exactly what I wanted. Now I need to pick some foam squares. I actually have to show you something too for greeting because I did a video just the other day featuring some of my recent releases and I will be sure to pop a card right up here for you if you wanna check it out. And I had an extra greeting left over that said happy holidays. Let me zoom in here a little. And I think I'm gonna use it on this card because I did emboss it in gold. This is Brutus Monroe Gilded. And it comes from 
my holiday typewriter stamp set, which just is filled with greetings and sub greetings for holiday cards in this simple typewriter font, which is so friendly. And I have a feeling that this could be perfect for this card. So let's get some foam squares and let's get a white note card. I went ahead and prepped my note card. I usually show that process, but I don't know why I didn't, I didn't turn the camera on. Okay, I'm gonna stand up over this because it's gonna be a very narrow margin. Look down, my head will probably get in the way, but oh, nope, not quite. Gosh, sometimes I tell you, I'm looking, it's focusing on my head and that my friends is going to be just fine. See how that purple glow just looks like the sun has just set? or it's coming up. I absolutely love it. Okay, foam squares. I want my church to be popped. Let me get my finger extensions as I like to call them. Oh, that I might not, I gotta figure that one out. There's some different dimensional levels that have to happen. And sometimes when you're building a card like this, it just is a little, you know, it's a little play. You gotta, oh, no, nope, don't want that one. Just a little play to figure out how that dimension is going to be because this is going to pop up a little however this is going to need to be doubled because it's got to cover the distance of two pieces of cardstock so it's kind of just playing right because that way now see how that stays nicely like let's make sure we might need a third one um you know what hold on I might need another little piece of cardstock. Sometimes you can do that too. And that's why I know uh, building up with cardstock is also a thing. And it will give you a little extra dimension. So if I take this off and then I pick up this little piece of cardstock, I can add it. And then I can add as many as I need and then that glues. Oh, that's better. It's, it's a fine line between clever and not so clever. Now I'm gonna tuck in my some of my house here. We're gonna have maybe that get a little close. In this town, people live really close together. They they don't they don't mess around. Uh, I think that is so cute though. Okay. And then we'll have our little tree here. A tall tree to the side. Ooh, that's a big tree. And this little tree off to the side. I don't think I want, well, what if I did do a few more trees just to have some to play with? Because then we are going to add just a little dimension to our, this, our greeting, your fingers. Sometimes there's a lot more work that goes into building these little simple scenes, right? Like, and I knew, I knew there was going to be some dimensional work happening here, but Look at how cute this is. I still think this might have to come up higher or come up lower and put happy holidays up top. Well, now there's that too. Huh, that's a thought because I almost feel like this needs to come, if we're doing this at the bottom, these need to come up higher into the community. <laughs> they need to be higher. So I think, I think I just realized the church really needs to be up, up, tree there, tree up there, maybe behind. Let me add a few more foam squares and get one more tree. I think I'm ready to start placing elements. So we will take the backers off of the foam squares, but I will add a little liquid glue to not only the foam squares, but that part as well. That foam squares are just to have a little, little float time but this actually does need some adhesive. And I may, I may come up even a little bit more. I wanna make sure that we are just about in the center, right about there, so that my lovely building reaches up into the sky for that beautiful look. In fact, you know what you can do? You can take a brick, Pop it on, right, while we work on our other pieces. Now, I don't have as much foam on here because this is gonna be in the second, bat, or the, the yeah, layer two of the hill, the snow hill, and so I want this to have a little lift, but I also want it to be able to 
wedge right into that space. So let's see if that works. That. Oh yes, come down just a little so the town houses are very close together. Okay. Oh, super cute. All right. It is so fun to build a little Christmas village. How many of you do holiday villages? I have never done one. One of my best friends has an amazing setup at her house every year. She does tons of village things and it's so cute. All right. I just dropped my little, my little loop de loop. Come here now. Come here, little friend. So now this little tree can come right there. And see how it's now supported right there? All right, I'm holding it. I'm letting it go. Oh my goodness. Labor of love. It is a labor of love. Okay. And this doesn't need any extra dimension because he's just sitting there. But I like that he's poking up in front of the hill as well. Like that. And the question is, I don't think we're going to do any fencing. I'm going to hold it up and see though, because that actually, I mean, that actually is cute, isn't it? The fence is cute. Um, let me think about that for a second. Let me <laughs> figure out where our third tree is going to go because I feel like it would be very cute. Well, let's just place it back there like that. It would be very cute in the distance and that would give us a trio of trees. And you know what? I think that's, yeah, I actually think that's really cute. I'm glad I did it. Now, for how many of you out there, is this just too fussy? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like you're like, yeah, Kathy, this is fun, but I would never, I would never get this fussy over a card. Oh, you know what? I'm actually going to have to, I'm actually going to have to come in a little bit this way because I think it has to go in there, right? I'm trying not to get my fingernail polish on anything because truth be told, this polish actually has left marks on my cardstock. One of the very few that does. But I'm just gonna hold that in place like that so that that way we have our third tree. <laughs> it's very sweet. Now, I don't think this needs the fence. I did it, I did fencing because I do think the fence is cute. And the thing that's kind of fun about this is you can piece it together so that if you wanted to have a fence that went all the way across, you could. You could jump it all together, but I think for this card today, I am not gonna put the fence on. I am going to add Happy Holidays here at the bottom. Just card project. You could go with a much more minimal greeting too, but look at, look at how sweet that is. I really like this. All right, taking off here. And again, if you know, when I'm making cards, oftentimes, especially if I have a stamp set like this one, I'll stamp out a bunch of greetings at once when I'm trying to figure out hmm, what do I want to use on this card. And I always save the greetings that turned out really well, that stamped well, that die cut well, um, because then I can pull them out for other projects. I also love snow season. <laughs> it's probably a good thing that I live in Minnesota, but. You know, you don't necessarily spatter snow on all year round. And so I love being in this season, even though this week it's going to be in the 80s here. And I'm like, when is fall coming? All right. Greeting come. And we're going to pop this down. Sometimes I can't use the tweezers, but like I said, I'm trying to avoid my, uh, my fingernails right now hitting things. I think this is why we use the liquid glue so we can slide a little slip slider and make sure that looks straight. I think it does. Now the only other thing that I wish I had, and I know it's like, well, you're going this far. What if I had a star up in the sky? It's a thought. I'll show you and then we'll decide. You know, I think it's optional. I think, I think the star's nice. I, I actually layered a couple stars together. This is from the Simon Says Stamp stars, so it cuts a ton of stars at once. I don't know. If I take it off, 
we just have the night sky. And I almost feel like it's a little cleaner that way. I don't know. Sometimes I try to add like a little last minute touch that's like going to be the greatest thing ever. It's not bad. But it's the, but because the church isn't completely centered, it's hard to figure out how the star goes. And it's gold. And I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Let me know in the comments what you would have done and if I'm about to make the biggest mistake ever. But I think I'm going to put the star on. <laughs> I mean, it's just a card, right? But you know how sometimes you know you're working on something and you think, I got the greatest idea, and then you throw something on and, and you're not sure if it's the greatest idea? Well, that's where, I, that's where I am right now. I'm not sure, but I will put a tiny bit of liquid glue. It's not going to hurt it, you know? It is not going to hurt anything. But this way, with the tweezers, I will actually have an easier way to see where I place it. So it'll be a little higher. I'm trying to shoot for the center of the card, not over the church. And press. And you know what? That is my finished card project. So there we are. We have a little town that has a lot of gold. We've got a beautiful snowy scene, some hills, labor of love, but what a sweet little winter village. You can find links to all of the supplies I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. I'll also have a blog post linked as well if you want to check out some photos. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you, so please hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. To see a few more holiday card project ideas, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below, and I'll see you in those videos.